well, right now to our brand new Fox Business Cavuto web page because I can't be egotistical enough. Uh, again, it's foxbusiness.com slash Cavuto. Remember, everything is about me. Here's a check on the results of today's Cavuto poll question of the day. Should the government stop all financial aid to the housing market? 95% of you callous folks say yes. 5% of you say no. It's all on that Cavuto site which is about me. But enough about me. Back to the show that's about me. Tax cuts didn't do it, the war in Iraq didn't do it, and neither did all that money in Afghanistan do it, or all the dough for fighting terror anywhere and everywhere do it. Now, you know what really got the deficit swelling? Entitlements, growing and growing and growing. I want you to take a look at this chart. The yellow line represents Iraq war spending. Uh, in or out, a lot of blue, just the same. So, why? Don't liberals just fess up and quit warring with the facts. Wars didn't put us in this mess. They didn't help it, but they didn't put us in this mess. Free spending pretty much and everything else did. To Jonathan Honig and Mike Norman, Lizzie McDonald. Jonathan, what do you make of it? Well, Neil, the stimulus spending now outweighs the cost of the Iraq war. And you're absolutely right. We have created an entitlement culture in this country, which even stretches much further back uh, uh, than simply the stimulus spending. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, we're talking about hundreds of trillions of dollars uh, of unfunded liabilities to this country. And that's truly where the deficit can be found. Not in the wars, not in the proper functions of government, but entitlement spending. And unfortunately, that's the one element of government that seems set to grow and grow and grow in the months, weeks, quarters ahead. Now, Mikey, you, you, you don't care if deficit spending is an issue to you. Well, first, first of all, deficit went up. I mean, let's be honest. It also went up because we're in the worst recession since the Great Absolutely. Depression. All right. Absolutely. So revenues came down. But look, as a matter of accounting, national income equals national product. In other words, total income equals our total output. So if you want a smaller deficit, there's only one way to do it shrink the economy. Now, is that a good option? <laughs> it's not. I mean, you got, that's, but he's laughing, but it's arithmetic. I mean, the only way for the government to net save, to take in money, is to take it from us. So, I mean, if you want a smaller deficit now, and I really don't know why the reason you would want one now when we have 10% unemployment, you've got to shrink the economy. So it's a choice. Shrink the economy, have a smaller deficit, or grow the economy, have a bigger deficit. It's a very simple choice. We have to make our decision as a nation. I think, unfortunately, we're going towards let's shrink the economy so the government has some money. It, it doesn't make any Lizzie, sense. what do you make of that? Well, uh, to a degree, I agree with what Mike's saying. If, you know, if government austerity was, would kill the economy, then Japan and West, uh, West Germany, I think, West Germany, <laughs> would never have come out of World War II. They never would have survived. So they went through a lot of government austerity then. Governments, can, countries can survive fiscal austerity but getting back to the entitlement uh, issue I mean it's political cyanide to try to reform Social Security right now Medicare that's why it's been on the back burner literally off the stove and has not been on the radar screen or and in the anyone, kitchen, someone whatever. mentions it poor Alan Simpson they, yeah that's so. right and so you know will we ever or, reform it and will they <laughs> make and, 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 like and, they have fiscal right. probity by hiking the retirement age and then call it a day Go ahead, John. Right. And Neil, what's so, tr what's so tragic is, is that all the safety nets that, for example, a lot of the European countries had always heralded as a cherished part of their culture, now we see that when the economies get tough, when the going gets tough, those safety nets inevitably are cut anyway. Well, so, you know, we're, mo <laughs> we're moving down this, this, this path of greater and greater government spending. At the end of the day, the safety net isn't even that safe. Well, in the I, can I address with. that? Because the safety net is cut in those European countries because when they gave up their currency sovereignty, they've essentially become like states in the United States, which we know if California is strapped or New Jersey or New York, they don't have the money. They don't have that printing press. They can't do it. Right. So, yeah, they're forced uh, into right, austerity. Right. But, that, but so the comparison is, is not perfect. It's right, not, but it's and, 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 and Mike is right. It's canard to say that Social Security and Medicare is bankrupt because you do have the printing press. But the issue is, will you trigger uh, Weimar Republic inflation? And by the way, that is such an issue. Canard, probity, Weimar <laughs> You are so I, I'm just, you know what, I'm wicked. just not going to talk anymore. But the issue is for t viewers and for taxpayers is this. AMT, Even though it's the Weimar the Republic. AMT and the AMT and, and the uh, capital gains tax is not indexed to inflation. So when you have rampant inflation, your taxes go up. All I'm saying is guys we can argue over whether deficits are wise or not the only thing i took away from this is that all those complaining it was the war all those complaining is tax cuts and all what we found out is when push came to shove the lion's share of it was just you know spending 
heavy domestic spending. And by the way, that occurred in Republican Democratic administrations. And it went on steroids this go around, but Jonathan, it, it is what it is. All right, and Neil, of course, the, the war will be discussed, you know, for, for decades and decades to come, but you can't argue with the fact that a military is the proper function of government. That's why we have a government. The green jobs program, oh. the... the well, and taking care of the poor. Jonathan, come on, we have to take care of our poor as well. <laughs> okay, and we have to look at this war and whether the Iraq war was worth it. The president's address tomorrow, Life for the Oval Office, we're on it and on reaction throughout the night because of it.